Yeah, so Saif al-Islam Gaddafi is one of the most prominent, more prominent sons of uh, Muammar Gaddafi, who was Libya's previous um, dictator. Under the previous regime, he was seen as the kind of reformer candidate who was the heir apparent to his father. So before the revolution took place, it was kind of assumed that he would eventually take over and would have a softer approach than his father. However, what happened when the revolution started in 2011, Saif actually ended up playing a key role in leading the attacks against protesters and to the extent that the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant against him for crimes against humanity for the role that he's believed to have played in uh, the revolution. So he's been living in exile. So how realistic is any bid for the presidency? Yeah, so he's a very divisive figure. He um, had a, an arrest warrant against him, a, a death sentence actually in, in Tripoli, but was held by a, a, a militia within Libya, and actually the, the, the state authorities had no access to him. So he's been living in exile in the sense that he, he's actually been in Libya, or he's understood to have been in Libya, but very much kind of under um, the, the eyes of his um, cap, well, previous captors. So there's been a huge amount of speculation about where he is, what he's doing, was he even alive for, for a long amount of time? Actually, the first we heard in public of Saif was this uh, July, he did a big interview with the New York Times. This seemed to be an attempt to kind of launch his presidential bid and we've now seen uh, just yesterday or the day before that he has come out in public and launched his presidential campaign however it's unlikely that his bid is going to be successful he's a very divisive figure you know a lot of people in libya obviously remember his role uh, as Gaddafi's son and also in the revolution and therefore they would not uh, vote for him and while there are some uh, communities in libya that do still kind of uh, support him and, and may maybe would vote that is not the majority um, that, you know, and so I think it's, it's very unlikely he would have a successful bid. However, what he has done is really kind of put a, a cat among the pigeons um, because what we've seen in the last two days since he um, said he was standing for, for president is we've seen attacks and protests at many polling stations and, and voting offices around Libya by groups who say, you know, we're under no circumstances are we going to allow uh, one of Gaddafi's sons to, to potentially run as president, even though it's unlikely he would win. So it's really created quite a significant backlash on the ground. This yeah, week. and quite a bit of tensions. And I mean, it, it, it comes to that exactly. point whether elections themselves are going to be able to, to end the chaos that has reigned since his father's death. And that's it. And, and the problem we've got at the moment, so elections are due to take place uh, on the 24th of December. However, the process has been very convoluted, very contested, even right now with sort of six weeks or less than six weeks to go into the elections. It's, it's quite unclear what the process is going to be. They're going to have the first round of presidential elections, but parliamentary elections are going to be delayed. Uh, so it's all very much up in the air. And the problem is that although in theory, uh, the idea of having elections is to move past. There's been a lot of contested legitimacy, lots of, uh, you know, a whole series of different uh, transitional governments and authorities in Libya in the last 10 years. The idea of these elections is to draw a line under that and have a real sense of legitimacy um, that a new government can move forward with. However, what we're seeing in these elections is the opposite. There's no consensus behind the elections. The legal framework is very flawed and contested. Um, the kind of who can run as candidates is very up in the air. And therefore, the real danger is without that... Um, consensus behind it without any kind of reconciliation process underpinning that, elections are actually going to create greater division, as we've seen with the reaction to Cypher. And there's a real danger that, um, you know, these elections could intensify divisions, could lead to uh, greater clashes, they could be delayed and actually just intensify a lot of the chaos that's happening. Yeah. The interim prime minister, who's actually not eligible to run, has said he would do so if the people wanted that. Is he a possible way forward or is that also just a, a possibly um, a, 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 a sort of idea that won't come to fruition? Yeah, and this is the thing. So a lot of people are not happy with the current election framework, so we're getting lots of different um, proposals forward. Technically, um, under the UN roadmap that led to these elections, the current interim prime minister wouldn't be eligible to run, because the idea was if you're an interim prime minister, that you know, that you should end your, your term and, and let someone else take over. So it would be controversial if he, if he does stand. Um, they've been trying to amend the law to allow him to do that. That hasn't happened. Um, so while in theory, uh, so the, the Prime Minister Dubai is a less controversial figure. He has a lot less of the baggage that um, Saif al-Islam and others like Khalifa Haftar, who is the leader of the Libyan National Army, has, who is expected to, to stand also. Dubai would make more sense, but as I say, there's still many issues with his eligibility and that there's many concerns that actually he just wants to continue the power base that he's already established. And that, again, it wouldn't really be a, 
uh, you know, an underpinning for a new democratic way forward, but it would be a continuation of what we have now. Uh, and we're already beginning to see the cracks emerging in that. Um, in the way that this government has, has conducted itself. Mm. So you've got a lot of chaos around the election process itself. Is there any sense on the ground, given, as you say, there have been all these sorts of interim coalitions and um, different strands, is there any way of pulling that all together? Yeah, and, and this is a challenge. So we saw um, on Friday last week there was a, an international conference held in, in Paris with lots of international actors and some of the Libyan actors involved um, to come together to try and find a way forward. Um, although um, President Macron, the French president who um, hosted the event, was, was quite positive about it. And, and what we've seen from the UN and the international community is more of the same division. So they can't agree on what the best way forward is. So some actors think, you know, we just need to go with the framework that's currently in place. And maybe, yes, explored. If we have elections, anyone that's elected will have more authority. Maybe they can um, move things forward in the country. Others who take the stance that, well, actually, elections are likely to cause more chaos and division, and therefore what we need to do is amend the current electoral laws or delay them so there can be a, you know, a, a more solid sort of base of uh, consensus in the country. And essentially, no one is really in agreement on that. There's very little leadership from the UN or on the international side. So what we're seeing at the moment is lots of competing proposals of different ways this problem could be overcome. But as I say, with, with little over a month to go, what's happening now is, is just complete uncertainty on the ground. Libyan voters don't don't really know what's happening. They can register um, for elections at the moment. No one really knows what they're going to be voting for or who um, at the end of the year and when the second round of elections will take place at the start of next year. And, and that's the real concern that, that the clock has ticked down and a lot of the foundations that were meant to be in place through the UN um, roadmap are just not there. Um, and so I think, you know, it may still be that the UN or others or other Libyan actors try to enforce a different constitutional basis for the elections um, or try to delay them. But at the moment, uh, you know, it's anyone's guess what how things are going to turn out. But I think at the moment, if things continue, unfortunately, we're going to certainly see a lot more political instability and volatility in the coming months, even if elections take place and potentially, um, you know, driving greater instability with mm. um, flawed elections. Rihanna, really appreciate your analysis. Thanks so much. Thank you very much for having me.